Hey folks, my name is Libby Brown. I'm a senior program manager in Microsoft's identity division and uh, one of our product owners of our passwordless credentials with Azure Active Directory. I'm here to talk to you today about how Microsoft is doing with its progress towards our passwordless strategy all up, as well as share, share with you some of the, the lessons we're learning from our customers as we've been on this passwordless journey. So with that, I want to just start by saying congratulations to everyone in the FIDO ecosystem for the tremendous project progress that we've made over the past year plus. Um, this has really been an industry driven success story as as FIDO has, has moved forward in its development. Just in the past year, we have seen um, tremendous active participation by all the major platforms. Um, Michael, or Microsoft, Google, Apple are all in the mix, as well as all of the organizations that are setting up uh, FIDO um, and supporting that for their customers. It's truly been um, fantastic to see that cross device technology come into play um, and to start to see these real life implementations of our customers adopting FIDO authentication. So pat yourselves all on the back for the great work, um, but there's still always more to do. Part of the reason we're so excited is Microsoft is really making progress on the strategy that we laid out I think about five, six years ago, we used to have this box of four slides and we've changed that now to kind of show um, that we really are reaching uh, the end of what we started in terms of our strategy of getting organizations to password list from creating those password replacement offerings, whether that's Windows Hello for Business or FIDO authenticator keys um, to reducing where we prompt for passwords or even where we prompt users for authentication in general. Um, how are we getting our customers to transition to passwordless sign-in methods? Um, and just this summer in September on our consumer identity stack, Microsoft announced that you can now eliminate passwords from your account. You can go to your account settings and say, no, I no longer want a password. Um, that adoption and the, and the, 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 cheering that we heard uh, across the, the community was great and we can't wait to, to build that into our enterprise uh, services as well. But as you might suspect as enterprise or as uh, identity professionals, that's a little bit trickier when you start to look at all the enterprise use cases and all those places that passwords are just insidiously woven into to your day-to-day -day systems. So we have a bit of a ways to go there on our enterprise stack, but we're making progress. And more importantly, we're seeing tremendous growth. Um, really just this past six months, we've seen a hockey stick of in, uh, inflection of, of users um, kind of previously, I wanna say like just testing it out, feeling the waters, doing pilots and really starting to drive into adoption and deployment. Um, so while these growth numbers are all, uh, incredible numbers. Some of them are skewed because they just have such small user base with like our new credential, the temporary access pass, which we use for primarily for onboarding and bootstrapping. And we just announced in March. So that growth is, you know, tremendous because it's going from zero. Um, but then we see also great adoption coming with our FIDO security keys and Windows Hello for Business, which has been in the market now for five, six years, is really start, you know, just continuing to, to pick up that, that steam. And so um, this summer, we really feel like we've turned the corner and enterprises are getting the story and they're starting to move ahead. In terms of sheer scope and scale, you can see these numbers and how they build um, relative to, to each other, um, but it's still an exciting story to see all of them go together as our customers really are thinking about how do they entirely move all of their audience and use cases to passwordless. That data was from the Azure Active Directory side, our, our services as an identity provider. But for Microsoft, we also own the platform of Windows. And so we see the adoption and the growth and the success of web authentication uh, from that lens as well. And we're really seeing uh, that uptick as our industry starts to drive adoption. Um, the growth of monthly web authent calls has just boomed. And then the number of relying parties that are using Windows and taking advantage of that native platform integration um, for doing that seamless uh, web authentic flows using your device's pin or camera or biometric gesture has grown three threefold in the past two years. And we look forward to, to watching that grow and moving forward. 
So that's great that we are making this progress, but let's be real, we're doing that because we are facing some very, very serious challenges in this enterprise space. Microsoft put out uh, its first ever digital defense report uh, this past October that really lists out what we are seeing um, across our stack and working with the industry in terms of um, cybersecurity challenges, especially in the authentication uh, networking space. It should come as no surprise um, that the number of uh, cybersecurity incidences and attacks are just growing. Part of that is because the price of doing them is becoming cheaper and cheaper. Um, we're also seeing great uh, adoption and growth in just strong authentication overall. Um, and customers are starting to learn and understand that simply by turning on MFA, any MFA, even if it's bad, you will protect against more than 98% of your standard um, identity attacks. But the bad guys, those attackers, are also starting to recognize and shift their strategies. And we are starting to see a massive increase in phishing attacks, especially relative to other types of identity attacks, such as breach uh, replays or password spray attacks. Um, so moving just from strong authentication to phishing resistant authentication is, is where we are starting to drive uh, our customers and where we need industry support and in moving that forward because these attacks are getting more sophisticated, more real and more frequent. One of the big changes on the market uh, over the summer, especially for uh, US based organizations is in May, the uh, federal government issued an executive order and around cybersecurity to protect against these, these attacks. Um, because governments and security targets are the most prominent and frequent uh, victims of, of these cybersecurity attacks. That executive order, um, amongst other things, uh, directed all federal agencies to move towards phishing resistant MFA. Um, so what that means is we will start to see not just the governments, but all of the partners that work with the governments and enterprises that work with those governments um, starting to move towards unfishable or phishing resistant uh, credentialing, including FIDO and WebAuthn credentials. So uh, it's nice to have that uh, top level support uh, and push the industry forward from that direction in response to these attacks as well. So we, we've, we've shown you that the growth is real, the technology is there, um, the industry reasons behind pushing passwordless and strong authentication forward are real and, and growing daily. Um, but it doesn't matter from, from our perspective until our customers start to move forward and start to adopt this. And so we spent a lot of time this past summer talking to customers. We went out, uh, did 14 different um, workshops around the globe. We had over 300, uh, 700 people representing 300 companies come and talk to us about their deployment challenges with passwordless. Um, so we could learn um, and understand what their challenges are with, with, with driving passwordless at scale. I'm gonna share with you just a little bit of what we've heard from them on how they are taking their organization's password list, just so you understand kind of that journey for moving ahead, perhaps with your own organization or with the customers that you work with. And it really is a journey. This is not something that you are gonna go in one day and say, we're gonna go passwordless and you're gonna flip the switch and yay, passwords go away. No, there, there are steps along the way and especially for larger, more complicated enterprises, as you know, um, this is going to take some time to truly move from these weak credentials that have been embedded in our systems for 50 plus years to these new modern authentication credentials. But that's the first place to start is you must, in order to take advantage of modern authentication, you need to have your identity in a modern identity provider, one that can support these new um, protocols, these new web authentication flows, um, and take advantage of the latest and greatest across the authentication industry and off stacks. The next piece of that is your users aren't just authenticating because they like to sign in, yay, I enter my username, I enter my FIDO key and I'm, I'm done. No, they're trying to do their work and that work is happening through the apps and the web services that they use regularly. And so you need to start thinking about your organization's posture around how are we modernizing and upgrading our applications to take advantage of these modern capabilities as well. 
Um, this is actually a surprisingly large stumbling block. Um, maybe not surprising to many of you, but it wasn't my first area of understanding. But some of the organizations that we work with have catalogs of tens of thousands of applications. And so they're starting to think about what are the policies we need to put in place around upgrading, deprecating, moving and shifting authentication of, of these apps in our catalogs. The next part of the application kind of moves more now towards, we've, we've gone from large enterprise scale challenges, and now we're gonna to start to think about the users themselves. And the first part of that is, um, what are the devices that your users are using? Where are they, are they authenticating from? Are they primarily using a workstation? Are they mobile bound? Will they have need to use devices other than a personal phone to complete their MFA challenges? Understanding your user groups and what devices they're on and how they're authenticating to those apps um, will help you with the rest of your passwordless deployment. And so we start to th think about how are we segmenting into those user groups and what are the apps those groups are using, what um, auth methods are right for them, what devices do they need. And then as you start to think about those devices, start to think about, well, if they're on a Windows device, are we running the latest flavor of Windows that support these modern authentication protocols? For example, to do a uh, unlock your Windows PC with a FIDO security key, you need to be running um, one of the later builds of Windows 10. So as you think about your devices and, and work with the people in your organization that are doing device management, start to think about, um, are we building in the right capabilities? Are we having um, not only the right operating system, but the right hardware? It's great if you can do biometrics on a Windows PC. So are you looking for devices in your hardware refresh that support cameras or fingerprint readers? Uh, do they have a hardware-backed TPM to securely store those credentials on the platform? Those are all aspects of device readiness. Another piece of device readiness that um, not many organizations have started to think about yet is when it comes to remote authenticators. Um, so what are the, the, the remote authentication hardware pieces that you are going to need and how are you going to manage that? Some organizations like Microsoft is taking a very hands-off approach to FIDO security keys. And they're saying, you know, we're gonna let users use them, but we're not gonna manage them. We're not gonna provide them. You can go out and, and buy one, uh, you know, uh, uh, and, and, and we will let you use that FIDO security key with your account. Other organizations might really want to control that process and, and, and hand deliver, you know, blessed keys out to their users. And so it becomes more of a device fleet management and recovery story that they are thinking about. Um, and so understanding what devices you need for your user, what's the right form factor, who are the FIDO hardware vendors you wanna partner with, all also fall into that device readiness category. Once we're done with the, the getting their users set up on the, with the right hardware that they need, then it becomes how do they get those passwordless credentials onto that hardware and that's that bootstrap. And with bootstrap also comes recovery uh, because if you've got all your credentials stored tightly to devices and then you lose all your devices, how do you get up and going again? Um, and it's just that life cycle of credentials management. Um, we recommend and we, we know the best practices are to make sure your users have more than one strong device-based credential um, so that if they lose one, they can always recover from the other one. But start to think about how are you going to go from a new employee on day zero to having you know, that Windows Hello for Business or that FIDO authenticator um, what processes and, and procedures do you need to change or implement or bring into play to get them bootstrapped? It's just a, it's part of that hurdle of getting uh, your organization fully, fully passwordless to think about those challenges. We're also saying that just because a user has a FIDO key doesn't mean that they're using them. Um, you know, old habits die hard and you've been using a password for so many years, you might just continue using that password. Um, so start to think about how your organization is going to drive both that registration of, of those keys, um, as well as that overall usage. 
And then lastly is track your progress because then you get to celebrate your wins. At each step along the way, you should be able to show, hey, look, we moved so many users to password lists or this many more apps are protected or we're seeing far fewer uses of password in our organization. And those little wins will also help build momentum to drive you through the rest of the way of this journey. So we really just say, you know, make sure you, you can celebrate those successes um, because it will, it will help build support and enthusiasm over time. And so that's kind of the, the overview of how organizations are moving ahead with their passwordless journey. Um, and, and while every organization is unique, these are very common challenges to the, the companies that we're working with. But some interesting feedback that we heard um, in addition to that journey with them um, was that there are other challenges besides deployment that cu customers were, were wrestling with. One of the key things that struck me was that for our IT admins, they really care about their users as well from that usability perspective. If users think that security is hard, they will avoid security at all costs. Um, so, so our IT admins also recognize that these strong authentication methods um, with built-in biometrics that are seamlessly integrated into a device and your normal daily flow um, is a better way to keep their account secure. And so that is a very important aspect of, of why they want to go passwordless as opposed to just your more traditional password plus MFA. The next thing that we've really heard is that this lifecycle management is going to be a challenge for them. And, and you know, they come and say, hey, Microsoft, how can you help us with this? Um, you know, how can we make bootstrapping more simple and seamless? How can we understand, you know, in a mover, join or leave situation that we're, we're closing down credentials that we don't need anymore? Um, there's that is kind of a, a space for the industry to, to do more work there. The next scenario is, you know, from an Azure Active Directory pr perspective, I've always been focused with, you know, this is my company, these are my employees. But what those companies are saying is it's not just about the employee, it's about our guests, it's about our supply chain partners, it's about our customers. How are we going to take them passwordless? How are we going to make them go passwordless? How are we going to drive uh, them to use these um, secure credentials as they access our resources as well as our services? How do we make that simpler for them? And so that really is, is fast on the heels of, of that strategy of getting these passwordless creds out and, and moving to adoption is making them work for everyone in that ecosystem. Another surprising thing for me is that, um, you know, I, I, at Microsoft, we are almost entirely passwordless. Um, we have almost a quarter of a million uh, monthly active passwordless users. Um, and I primarily do that by opening up my laptop, Windows hello, smiles at me, says, good morning, Libby, and I'm logged in. Um, but biometrics are extraordinarily polarizing. Um, and I think some of that is just related to the fear, uncertainty, and doubt of what happens when your biometric is captured in digital format. Um, so the folks who, who um, love biometrics are, are you know, fully in support of them, but there is a lot of, of fear and distrust. And uh, a lot of people say, no, we really only want to pin thank you um, as they're concerned about biometric data, leaving the device, being stored centrally, um, being a point of attack and, 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 and breach of privacy for their users. Um, I think we have more work to do overall to make sure that people are comfortable with biometrics as being safe, secure, and private for our users. And the last thing that we've, we've heard, and actually I really should have put this first because when we said, hey, what's preventing you from moving faster with FIDO, the number one piece of feedback we got was keys are too expensive. And while when we dig into that statement of key, the keys are too expensive and we start to say, well, you know, is it more expensive than your password reset challenges from your help desk? Is it more expensive than buying hardware oath tokens for strong, secure, you know, second factor authentication? Um, and they started to reason on those costs. Um, we need to do better, both Microsoft as an industry, to make sure that return on investment of investing in FIDO and investing in device-based authentication really uh, is upfront. And, and the admins who have to go employ that, go deploy that, can make that business justification um, to their executive management as well. And, and just really make sure that that investment is clear um, and we see that return on investment for being more secure and having these strong authentications in place. 
So lots to noodle on from our customers, always more to do in this space. So let's see where Microsoft is going next with uh, passwordless and how we're taking, trying to get passwordless just from, you know, hey, we've got the capabilities to, now everyone's using it, taking it broadly at scale. Definitely have improvements needed around authentication, um, being able to provision security keys at scale. How can I as an admin order a thousand keys, assign them to a user, ship them out and let them get going with FIDO right away? One thing that will definitely help there is with the CTAP 2.1 protocols, the ability to set and, and manage that temporary pin. Last thing we want is the admin provisioning a thousand keys with a pin of one, two, three, four, five that go out in the wild and never get reset. So, you know, that temporary pin capability will add to that level of security there. We're working uh, with the FIDO Alliance and, and all the, the partner platforms on doing that cross device platform authentication. That is, I have a mobile device and I can use it to unlock another device to transfer and, and, and bootstrap a strong credential from one mobile device to the next device and so forth. How can we keep that, um, that harmonious process of authentication moving forward, universal, seamless, and simple for our users? And then the last authentication improvement is just removing those barriers to FIDO. Like our, our authentication protocols and libraries supporting FIDO authentication, supporting WebAuthn, um, those are just, that's kind of a, a game of just continually driving down and hitting the next step until the next big problem comes along. And so that's probably our longest tail of, of improvements from the Microsoft perspective. The other thing that customers are clamoring for is being able to do strong authentication across more products, um, especially in a virtualized world. So Microsoft is starting with bringing um, Windows Hello for Business and FIDO authentication to our virtual desktops and Windows 365 offerings and um, moving then down the stack towards remote desktop protocol authentication in general. But that is a, a, the next big, um, next big area that, that customers really want is for my virtual environments, how can I take my very real FIDO uh, authenticator to access those? And then coming into the spaces, um, we've made great progress with authentication, but the next challenge is how do we know that the person that has this wonderful strong authentication credential is in fact who they say they are? And so that identity verification is the next challenge that really is facing our industry. We believe verifiable credentials um, are one of those big opportunities there, um, especially for uh, workforce uh, verification. You know, if if I was issued a verifiable credential that says I'm an employee of Microsoft, the next time I need to prove myself and I've you know I don't have my laptop, maybe I can use my verifiable credential to continue to to bootstrap up into that next scenario. So those are just kind of some of the top of mind areas that Microsoft is going to be targeting with its passwordless story moving forward. But really, we are now at a point where we just want to go and drive the industry um, and drive our customers to being more secure, to making those better experiences for their customers and users. It's a great place to be, and we're super excited to continue this journey. I wish I had time to say, you know, let's take some questions. Um, but in the meantime, these are some, some resources and pointers that you can go and access if you're, you're looking for more information about how Microsoft is going passwordless um, and see some white papers and use cases and resources that would help you or your customers move forward with their passwordless journeys as well. And with that, I will say thank you very much. It's uh, been an honor to be a part of this presentation and be part of this, this, this conference. And I hope you have a good rest of your day.